bright duty every student matters hello everyone now we are going to begin with this chapter 7 or theme 7 of history syllabus class 12 it is named as new architecture hampi so coming to discuss about that the overview the broad view of that the hampi what actually it says about that the great kingdom of vijayanagar which had successfully resisted muslim advance in the south for more than 2 centuries that is from the mid 4th century to mid 6th century was crippled by the decisive battle of talikota in 1565 also known as rakshasi tangadi in the later part we will discuss about this better the muslim invaders ruined the empire and the magnificent city of vijayanagar is completely destroyed this is the city was reduced to a heap of uninhabitable ruins vijayanagar a part of karnataka was contested between the later sultans of deccan sultan of mysore only at the very end of the 18th century when the state formed the part of the territories ceded to the madras presidency under the control of the east india company british east india company when it was controlled by them as a part of the madras presidency this is did some measure of peace return to this area worship in the virupaksha temple at hampi must have been restricted at this time because the shrine was thoroughly renovated with the repair of entrance gopuram and the cleaning and decoration of the ceiling paintings inside so this way this the massive structure and the very magnificent structure was completely ruined which was rediscovered and repaired during the period of british east india company in the 18th century so this is the overview that the broad view of this chapter which we are going to discuss part by here hampi or vijayanagar vijayanagar means the this is about that city of victory was the name of both a city and empire it was name of a city as well as the entire empire was known as vijayanagar the empire was founded in the 14th century by hari hara and bukka and this is the year mentioned over here 1336 the empire is stretched from the river krishna in the north to the extreme south of the peninsula so this is the means the territorial boundary and the area through which this vijayanagar empire was expanded hampi is another name of vijayanagar empire the name hampi is derived from the local mother goddess this is very important local mother goddess pampa devi and the local people remember vijayanagar empire as a hampi the remains of vijayanagar empire have been found at the modern hampi in karnataka so this is the modern day hampi which is now after renovation so what are the sources through which we can collect the idea about this region or the architectural planning of this hampi oral traditions then inscriptions which is available then monuments which has been constructed during the period of the 14th century and other records also health historians to reconstruct the story of or the history of hampi or vijayanagar empire so i think there is no any confusion regarding this hampi or vijayanagar the same name is there the local people they are calling it hampi with the name of their mother goddess pampa devi and in the history it is also known as the vijayanagar empire it's a name of a city as well as the entire empire is known as vijayanagar empire then it comes about that the story of discovery how hampi was found 
so this is a very interesting story behind it how this city how this the entire empire was formed the ruins of hampi were brought to light in 1800 by an engineer and antiquarian one who collects old things antiquarian who is known as antiquarian antiquarian that the work is done by them is to collect old things and his name was colonel colin mckenzie this is now a method that the idea and introduction about who was actually this uh, colonel colin kalenji he was uh, sorry colin mckenzie he was born in 1754 and became an engineer surveyor and cartographer cartographer one who is having expertise in drawing of maps and in 1815 he was appointed as the first surveyor general of india and remained in the post till his death till 1821 in order to understand india's past to make governance of the colony easier he surveyed many historic sites he has been appointed by the british east india company and what was the work assigned to him to survey the many of the historic site and to bring it in the knowledge of the british empire he thought that regional customs and the traditions will benefit the english east india company in its administration and what was the motive behind it why he has been appointed and given assigned these duties because of that for the better administration of the english east india company so this is a means a brief introduction about colonel colonel colin mckenzie this is as an employee of english east india company he prepared the first survey map of the site of the site here means that the hampi first of all what he did he has created a map then he conducted his studies first based on the memories of the priest of the viru paksha temple and the shrine of pampa devi these two temples are very important for the local people in this area subsequently from 1856 photographs began to record the monuments which enabled scholars to study about the hampi as early as 1836 epigraphists began collecting several dozen of inscriptions found at this and other temples at hampi not only these two many of the temples were there the information thus collected was corroborated with the accounts of foreign travelers and the other literary works so these are the sources through which we are getting the idea about the story or the history of the vijayanagar empire or hampi this is the famous virupaksha temple this is the miss the famous deity of the people of this hampi so this is all about that that despite all these efforts vijayanagar remained a remote site and there were never too many visitors even after the appearance of hampi ruins illustrated and written by archaeologist a h longhurst in 1925 work at hampi accelerated only in the late 1970s under a national project that further stimulated clearing work and extensive excavations of the palace area by central and state archaeologist these activities were fully underway when the vijayanagar research project began work at the site in 1980s the work is still going on under the direction of archaeological survey of india and the karnataka government directorate of archaeological archaeology and museum so this is now the all the efforts put up by the state government as well as by the central government to find out the ruins to find out the facts about the sites of hampi or sites of vijayanagar empire the very interesting topic it is the vijayanagar the rayas naikas and sultans under this heading we have to discuss about this who were the rayas who were naikas and who were sultans so according to the tradition 
epigraphic evidence so that the vijayanagar empire was founded by two brothers hari hara and bukka this is the hari hara and bukka were the two brothers they founded this dynasty or this empire in 1336 In a, when Muhammad bin Tughlaq was the ruler of Delhi Sultanate, in the Central India, can say that or the Northern India, this is the entire this the Northern India was under the control of the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, and it was Muhammad bin Tughlaq was one of the famous ruler of Delhi Sultanate. Hariyara and Bukka asserted their independence of the Delhi Sultanate and established the kingdom of Vijayanagar. They also founded the city of Vijayanagar on the. southern bank of river tumbhadra the two brothers made large conquest and expanded their kingdom and it became a great kingdom in the far south which included the present territories of tamil nadu and mysore it was ruled by four dynasties and about the three countries so this is three centuries actually so the four dynasties were there and in the three centuries they have been just ruled over there so which were the four dynasties which they ruled over here were the sangam dynasty then it comes saluva dynasty third is taluva dynasty and the last is aravidu so these are the four dynasties which they ruled till the three centuries the empire included within its functioning a fluctuating frontiers people who spoke different languages and were followers of different religions vijayanagar empire was surrounded by several rival powers on their northern frontier vijayanagar kings competed with that the contemporary rulers and the sultans of the deccan and the gajapati rulers of odisha so this is about that contemporary such as sultans of deccan and the gajapati rulers of odisha and control of the fertile river valleys and resources that were brought by overseas trade so this was the competition among that the different rulers during this time the warfare depended mainly upon powerful cavalry in the beginning the horse trade was in the hands of the arab traders the local communities of vijayanagar known as kudrai chettis chettis is actually a word used for the merchants in that the local language of karnataka horse merchants simple it is kudrai is the means kannad word for horse these were the horse merchants also participated in this trade so this is about that the kudrai chetti and from 1498 portuguese who settled on the west coast of india and attempted to establish their trading and military stations in vijayanagar empire before this also some of the empire within the empire had sometimes witnessed the development of powerful states such as that of the cholas in tamil nadu paisalas in karnataka the rulers and the prince in these areas had extended patronage to large temples such as brihadeswara temple at tanjavur and the chenna keshava temple at belur the kings of vijayanagar who called these rayas built on these traditions and carried them to new heights all these the temples which were ca carried by the architectural planning and the construction work was carried out by the rayas rayas means the kings so then we are coming to discuss about that the kings and the traders who were the trading class during this the vijayanagar kings this is the during the this time the warfare depended mainly upon powerful cavalry already we discussed the most the import of horses of fine breed from arabia and the central asia was very important for the rival kingdom this is about that they these the portuguese who settled on the west coast of india and attempted to establish their trading and military stations 
so this is this is about that the portuguese who settled on the west coast of india and attempted to establish their trading and military stations and their superiority in military technology helped them to become important players in the tangential politics of that time vijayanagar was famous for its markets dealing in spices then textiles and precious stones these were the commodities or the items which were miss sold in the market and they were having the expertise on in all these things so these cities hosted sorry these cities boasted of a wealthy population that demanded high value foreign goods especially precious stones and jewelry this is the great in demand in the european countries and the revenue derived from trade in return contributed much to the prosperity of the state because of that the huge profit were earned by the merchants with that the foreign trade and with this profit the prosperity of the state prosperity of the country was developed trade was a status symbol for cities in the empire and boasted of a wealthy population that was in need of high value exotic strange foreign goods such as precious stones and jewelry the revenue that came from the trade was used for development of the state there all the development work were taking place with the help of the profit earned by the merchants then the climax and decline of the vijayanagar empire both the things we have to discuss first climax and then what were the reason for the decline of the vijayanagar empire krishnadev raya he was one of the most famous and the important ruler of the vijayanagar kingdom he was a very good military leader he was a poet also patron of art learning and literature then ashta digaza this was the title given to him famous alasani pedanna it's a book written in telugu language author of the manu charita krishnadev raya also a writer of amukt malyada in telugu which is a very famous work the historians also consult about this work to collect the story about that to collect the fact about the vijayanagar empire this is the picture of the legendary king krishnadevraya this is now vijayanagar under the rule of krishnadevraya so this is the first dynasty of the vijayanagar empire was known as the sangama dynasty the four dynasty they ruled for the three centuries according to that the harihara and bukka who they have founded this uh, empire in 1336 so this is the sangama dynasty dynasty which ruled up to 1485 the second was founded by narsimha is called the saluva dynasty and it reigned from the 1486 to 1492 and the third dynasty known as taluva dynasty for founded by narasa nayak and he ruled for the 1492 to 1529 and the greatest ruler of the vijayanagar empire was krishnadev raya and his he was from the taluva dynasty then dr iswari prasad remarks about that gives his remark about this the krishnadev raya as the chief characteristics of krishnadev raya's rule were there was no ruler among the sovereigns of deccan both hindus and the muslims and who could stand comparison with him he was a great warrior it was only in his reign that the hindu kingdom had the advantage over the muhammadan neighbors because surrounding areas the bijapur golconda all these were ruled by the muslim rulers ruled by the sultans then although his kingdom remained in a constant state of military preparedness it flourished under condition of unparalleled peace and prosperity krishnadev raya was an able administration administrator he was a very able administrator he built dams for irrigation built magnificent palaces and temples also for he built dams then he added impressive gopurams to many famous south indian temples 
many of the temples were already lying over there constructed by the different rulers but the gopuram and mandapam concept were developed during the period of krishnadevaraya which we will discuss in great detail in the later part he added impressive gopurams and this is about that one of the he also founded a sub urban township near vijayanagar called nagalapuram after his mother name of his mother Krishnadev Raya was himself a great scholar and patronized learned man he gave liberal grants to the brahmins foreign travelers who visited india in the beginning of the 16th century highly praised the glory of the splendor of vijayanagar empire then it is about that what are the other contributions of him he ruled this 1509 to 1529 almost 20 years he was characterized by full expansion and consolidation he brought under his control the land between the tung bhadra and the krishna river called the raichu doab in the year 1512 because of that this is the entire territorial area is between the two rivers river krishna and river tung bhadra he defeated pratap rudra of gajpati dynasty the ruler of the orissa in 1514 and the sultan of bijapur in 1520 and ruled his rule is credited with building of fine temples and attractive gopurams to many important south indian temples for example gopuram of the brihadeswara temple at tanjavur he also founded the sub urban township near vijayanagar called nagalapuram named after his mother This is the famous Brihadaswara Temple at Tanjavur, and the Gopuram has been constructed by him. This is the means the very important architectural planning was done in those days. This temple never cast shadow. This is the means the special feature about this architectural planning. Every building they cast their shadow, but this temple never cast its shadow. This is the very special feature about this temple. now for the recap we can do some of the questions who founded the ruins of hampi so this answer we have to do this is the colin mckenzie who founded vijayanagar empire in 1336 by two brothers ari hara and upka name the most powerful ruler of the vijayanagar empire krishna dev raya major political innovations of the vijayanagar empire was the system of then next coming to discuss about that the condition of vijayanagar after krishna dev raya what happened to this kingdom or this empire after the death of krishna dev raya in 1529 his successor faced problems created by rebellious naikas or military chiefs by 1542 the control of the empire came under the ruling lineage aravidu which continued till the end of the 17th century this is only the ara Aravidu dynasty. In this, Aravidu. This means that the Karnataka. It is in the Karnataka. Aravidu means Karnataka. In 1542, the Vijayanagar had started plundering territory of Bijapur, and what happened finally? By this time, the Bahmani sultans of Deccan. they had realized how much loss they had suffered due to the mutual jealous due to the mutual jealousies they were 
started losing their property, their wealth. So, this is the a combined army of the sultans of Bijapur, Golconda, and Ahmadnagar and Birar. These were the four territories nearby the Vijayanagar Empire. They invaded the Vijayanagar Empire and its ruler, Ramarayan. Who was the last ruler? Ramarayan. Ramaraya was miserably defeated on the battle of Rakshasi Tantangadi, which is also known as the Tali Kota in AD 1565. The military ambitions of the rulers of Deccan Sultans resulted in shifting alignments. Eventually, it resulted in an alliance to the Sultanates against the Vijayanagar, ruled by Sada Sivaraya. 1565, the battle of Talikota started and the army was led by Ramaraya, the chief minister of Vijayanagar, January 23, 1565. The army of Vijayanagar defeated by the combined armies of Bijapur, Ahmadnagar and Golconda. Berar was also there. Then the victorious army sacked the city of Vijayanagar. The city was abandoned with a few years. After the defeat of Aravidu, dynasty shifted its focus to the east and ruled from Penukonda, later from Chandragiri, Chandragiri near Tirupati. So this is all about that, the Rakshasi Tangadi or the battle of Talikota. And this way, this uh, the great dynasty, the great empire, came to an end, just after the death of the Krishnadev Raya. Then it comes about that the Vijayanagar choosing, a, why this the Vijayanagar? They have chosen, this is as a capital city. The area in which Vijayanagar, the capital, city, the capital of the empire is situated, is associated with the sacred traditions. It had many temples and the temple buildings which had a long history. Virupaksha temple, the guardian deity of the kingdom. There are also Jain temples of the pre-Vijayanagar period. The rulers of the Pallavas, Chalukya, Hoysalas and the Chola dynasties who encouraged building temples in this area. They often granted land and the other resources for the maintenance of these temples. So, what it says that the Sultans were the reasons for the destruction of the city Vijayanagar in the battle of the Talikota which took place in 1565. But the relationship between the Sultans and the Rayas were not always hostile in spite of religious differences. Krishnev Raya supported some claimants to power in the Sultanates and took pride in the title of the establisher of Yavana kingdom. Similarly, the Sultan of Bijapur intervened in, the, in an attempt to resolve the successor disputes of Vijayanagar following the death of Krishnadevaraya. So, according to the historians, the Vijayanagar kings were keen to ensure stability of sultanates and vice versa. But due to adventurous policy of Ramaraya and his attempt to play off one sultan against another, the sultan came together and defeated him decisively. Because of that, this the Ram Raya and his attempt. He was that uh, playing the role between that the, against one Sultan to another. And for that, he has paid the cost also. He bore the cost also, and this kingdom was came to an end. Vijayanagar choosing a capital. The area in which Vijayanagar, the capital of the empire, which is associated with the sacred traditions. It has Birupaksha temple, the guardian deity of the kingdom. The rulers of Pallava, Chalukya, Hoysala and Chola, Chola dynasties often granted land and other resources for the maintenance of the temples. The kings of Vijayanagar, they claim to rule on behalf of God Virupaksha, a form of Lord Siva. So, this way they claim that they are just ruling over this territory, this kingdom 
on behalf of Lord Shiva. This is again that it is said that this is it is likely that the choice of the site of the Virupa Vijayanagar was inspired by the existence of the shrine of Virupaksha and Pampa Devi. This is the local mother goddess. The kings of Vijayanagar they have claimed they have to rule on behalf of the Virupaksha or Lord Shiva. Next, it is about that the relations between the Rayas and the Nayakas. This is actually the Rayas and the a major political innovation of the Vijayanagar Empire was the setting up of the Amar Nayaka system. This was the major political innovation which was done during the period of Vijayanagar Empire. Many features of system were derived from the Ikta system of Sultanate. Collection of revenue. Actually, this system was related to the collection of revenue. So many of the things they have, they have just collected the ideas they have taken from the Delhi Sultanate. That system was Ikta system. Amar Naikas were military commanders who were given some territories to govern by the Vijayanagar rulers. Some of the territories were handed over to them. And they were empowered to collect taxes and other dues from the peasants. Now, these are the work given to them for the collection of the revenue. Craftsmen and the traders in their areas. So, the territory which has been assigned to them, they were supposed to collect the taxes from the peasants as well as the dues from the peasants. Then they have to collect the taxes from craftsmen and the traders in the areas which has been assigned to them. They were allowed to retain a part of the collected revenue for personal use and for the maintenance of the horses and elephants. For such work, they have to keep a part of the revenue which were collected by them from the peasants. Amar Naikas, they were... The Naikas were the military chiefs who usually controlled forts and had armed supporters. The Naikas spoke Telugu or Kannada. Many of them submitted to the authority of the kings of Vijayanagar, but often they rose in revolt against the kings. Kings were the Rayas and had to be subdued by military action. Some of the revenues which was also used for the maintenance of the temples and irrigation work. These the revenue which has been collected by Amar Naikas, they have to contribute for the maintenance and construction work as well as for the irrigation. They sent tribute to the king annually and personally appeared in the royal court with gifts to express their loyalty to the king. King asserted their control over them by transferring them from one place to another not to become the autocratic so what that the work was done by the what steps were taken by the king they have kept on moving the transfer policy were there they have not been given only one territory to rule over for till their lifetime it was not the policy the policy was that after sometimes they have to change the territory their territories were changed by the king in course of time they established independent kingdoms this was one of the causes of weakening and declining of the Vijayanagar Empire. This is also one of the reason behind it. As they were the powerful and gradually what they did, they have started establishing their independent kingdoms and this was the, missed the weak point and this was the one of the important reasons for the decline of the Vijayanagar Empire. The question is about that. Who were Amar Nayaks, so they were military commanders, who were given territories
So this is about that. Who were Amar Nayaks? They were military commanders, and who they have been given territory by the rajas to govern those particular territory. Which temple was used by the king and his family? That is Hazar Rama Temple. The name of the temple is Hazar Rama. Temple was used by the king and his family for the worshiping. Then it comes about that name the different dynasties that ruled over Vijayanagar Empire. There were the four, dy four dynasties. First is Sangam. Second is Saluva. Third is Taluva. This Devraya was from this dynasty only. And the last is Aravidu. After the decline of the Vijayanagar kingdom, this Aravidu dynasty that ruled over the southern India or the part of the Karnataka.